Squirreled away in this article, Jeremy Corbyn victory will prevent military action in Syria, senior Labour figure warns, was this line. It wasn't really squirreled away, it was about halfway down the first page. But still, the Prime Minister is not technically required to hold a vote ahead of any military intervention, but has said repeatedly that he will. Well, recent events seem to suggest that the PM was lying when he said this, because a few months ago we found out that British pilots were involved with the bombing of Syria, and recently the government told us they killed two British jihadis in Syria without parliamentary oversight. The point I was trying to make in my last video, David Cameron should be tried for murder, was that our government now seems to think it's okay to kill British citizens in foreign countries without any approval from our elected MPs that are supposed to represent us. We do not live in a dictatorship. Cameron claims it was in self-defence and that they were plotting to kill the Queen. A plot that we will never know if it was true or not because Cameron will not show any proof of this due to national security. So, we're being asked to trust David Cameron despite him being one of the most immoral, hypocritical, non-caring politicians since Tony Blair. We need to trust him because he wouldn't lie to us now, would he? He only lies to us on everything else. But we just need to trust Cameron on who does and who doesn't need killing. This is a very, very shocking and dangerous precedent that we've just set. But what makes this worse is that Cameron will be getting his intelligence from either MI5 or MI6. MI5 have a history of protecting paedophiles, filming children being raped, not helping the children, and all this just to further their own ends through blackmail. And MI6, well they were protecting the head of the 7-7 bombings while everybody else was trying to find him. Yeah. yeah. Aswat is believed to be the mastermind of all the bombings in London. From On the 7-7 and 7-21, this is the guy we think. This is the guy, and what's really embarrassing is that you, the, the entire British police are out chasing him, and one wing of the British government, MI6, or the British Secret Service, right. has been hiding him. Two very trustworthy organizations, and with Cameron on top, ha, what chance do we have of being told the truth? Only a day or so after we learn of these drone bombings, we find out that the government has a kill list which I'm sure has been put together by MI5 and MI6. Have you ever heard of our government having a kill list? I know Obama has one, but that's America. America has gone. Bye bye America. I spent a lovely couple of years with you, but I won't be returning because I fear that there won't be a country to return to pretty soon. Just think about this for a minute. The UK government has a kill list. A list of people they want to kill. They say that everyone on the list is a jihadi. At the moment, maybe. But how long before people exposing government corruption get put on their list? You think that sounds far-fetched? Remember Cameron said he was going to clamp down on all extremism? In Cameron's eyes, anyone who disagrees with him and his ideology or causes economic turmoil is an extremist. Remember when he said, and I'm paraphrasing, no longer will doing nothing or just living your life keep the government off your back. Do you remember him saying that? Remember when Cameron said he needed to surveil everything we do to keep us safe from the very terrorists he helped create? Remember that? Couple those things with the government having a kill list and killing people with drones without parliamentary oversight and you get a frightening vision of the future if we let them get away with this. Michael Fallon, our pompous looking defence secretary, has said the drone strikes were legal and that he'd do it again. He also recently attacked the absurdity of a ban on bombing Syria. Let's have a look at what he had to say. Well, we've used attacks like this before in the war in Afghanistan and in Iraq. Oh, so you admit to having used drone strikes to kill people in other illegal wars. At least the establishment and the government are consistent, eh? 
Well, the hit list is the other way around. There are a group of terrorists out there in Syria, uh, inspired, working with ISIL to try and uh, carry out armed attacks here in Britain on our streets at major public events involving significant loss of life. So that's the danger, that's the threat that we face and our agencies are working extremely hard to try and identify who is involved and what can be done to prevent uh, those attacks. And if there is no other way of preventing them, then yes, we have to carry out strikes like this. Is this man for real? If there's no other way of preventing attacks on our streets, then we have to carry out strikes like this. Does he mean that he's willing to use drone strikes on these people on the streets of the UK? I'm a bit confused. Judging by the back of his head, I think Michael Fallon has just woken up. So I guess we can cut him a little bit of slack. He's just not making sense. There are a series of plots of potential threats of armed attacks on our streets and to major public events. I can't go in, I'm afraid, to, because of security reasons, go into specific details. But it looks like the Express newspaper can go into details. <laughs> What utter tosh. The only way to deal with ISIS is to defund them and stop sending them weapons. Bedhair Fallon needs to put pressure on Saudi Arabia and America to stop supporting ISIS. If their weapons and funds dry up, they'll soon disband. The government want and are desperate for a war in Syria, and this is partly to allow Murdoch and the despicable disgusting Rothschild's family access to the Golan Heights so they can drill for oil. Let's just have a layman's recap on Cameron's position on Syria. In 2013, Cameron went all out to win a vote to attack Assad because the government and the prostitute media told us Assad fired chemical weapons, which happened to be fired on the very day that Assad had invited the United Nations weapons inspectors into his country. We now know that it was in fact the rebels that done it in it, and they fired the chemical weapons and not Assad. But the truth didn't deter Cameron from going along with peddling a good lie to get the war he's been told to start started. If Cameron had won that vote, he would have been supporting ISIS. Yes, supporting those heart-eating savages we know today as ISIS. The same terrorists that John McCain met with and said that he kind of liked them and that they were nice guys. We would have become the Air Force for ISIS because, I'll say it again, the rebels in Syria were and still are ISIS. Vladimir Putin also said in 2013 that if the West striked Syria, then he would order a massive strike on Saudi Arabia, which, without any shadow of a doubt, would have led to a major regional war, if not a world war. And after the 2013 vote, Cameron said that he got the fact that people didn't want to start war with Syria and that his government would act accordingly. Mr Speaker, on a point of order, there having been no motion passed by this House tonight, can the Prime Minister confirm to the House that he will not use the royal prerogative to order the UK to be part of military, of mili of military, action, of military action, given the will of the House that has been expressed tonight, before there has been another vote in this House of Commons? Order. It is, of course, not a matter for the Chair, but the Prime Minister has heard it and is welcome to respond. Point of order, and I can give that assurance. Let me say the House has not voted for either motion tonight. I strongly believe in the need for a tough response to the use of chemical weapons, but I also believe in respecting the will of this House of Commons. It is very clear tonight that the, while the House has not passed a motion, it is clear to me that the British Parliament, reflecting the views of the British people, does not want to see British military action. I get that, and the government will act accordingly. He followed this up by saying, Parliament has spoken very clearly on the issue of bombing Syria, adding, I'm not planning to return to Parliament again to ask again about British military action. He was, of course, lying. That's unlike David Cameron to lie, I know, but he was lying and he also knew that he was lying. He knew there was at some point going to be another vote on bombing Syria. You can read this government and David Cameron like a book 
and not a very good book, not a very informative book. The government will again ask MPs for consent to take military action in Syria, despite Parliament's previous rejection of the policy in 2013, the Defence Secretary has said. And now they are already floating the idea of putting troops on the ground, but this time it's not to get Assad, it's to get ISIS, who are fighting Assad. British troops could be deployed in the Middle East to set up and protect safe havens for refugees fleeing Syria. British forces could be deployed to Syria to help set up safe havens for refugees, David Cameron said yesterday. The Prime Minister, who previously ruled out the idea, said yesterday that the creation of safe zones was certainly the right sort of thinking. But just to make matters worse, Russia are now also supporting Assad in Syria, and the New York Times recently had this article. US warns Russia over military support for Assad. Secretary of State John Kerry told his Russian counterpart on Saturday that the United States was deeply concerned by reports that the Kremlin may be planning to vastly expand its military support for President Bashar al-Assad of Syria, warning that such a move might even lead to a confrontation with the American-led coalition, the State Department said. Okay, let's recap this situation as I see it now. We will vote again to bomb Syria, and Cameron will probably win the vote because we have a dumbed-down nation who are easily propagandized into thinking that the only way to stop people fleeing death, destruction, and a war-torn country is to cause more death more destruction, and to make the country even more war-torn. And also because we're led by child-raping, blackmailed, and pointless suck-ups, good politicians who will do exactly as they're told. We will of course be joining America in attacking Syria, but this time we will be attacking ISIS that are attacking Assad in Syria. Remember, ISIS are being funded by America, so America will be fighting against America's own weapons. Russia will also be attacking ISIS in Syria and helping Assad, but America aren't happy with Russia attacking ISIS, so America have said they may attack Russia for helping Assad, but we and America will be in Syria to fight ISIS to help Assad. If America attack Russia for helping Assad fight Syria, a mission that we in America will also be doing, there is a real possibility of a major war and even World War III. I know I've said that a lot, but the world literally is teetering on the edge of a global disaster. And the elites need a major war to take our mind off the fact that the bankers are just about to collapse the economies of the world. We all know that the end game in Syria is regime change. Politicians will deny it, but politicians lie all of the time. Just listen to the rhetoric crank up once the bombing starts. From, we're only bombing strategic bombs to boots on the ground, let's get Assad because he's a bad man. Despite the fact that Assad is fighting ISIS and we're going to be in Syria supposedly fighting ISIS. It's unbelievable. You are stupid. If you think that more bombing of Syria will stop the refugee crisis, it will only make things worse. A whole lot worse. We have insane people ruling this planet.